So, I have some exciting news. I found a free website that allows you to turn any 3D model into a plushie and has seam allowances built in. Now, if you don't sew, then you likely don't know what a big deal this is. Just let me explain. Normally, when you make a pattern for an item, you have to use measurements and extrapolate based on that and create seam allowances, and that is a massive pain in the neck. And if it's a three-dimensional shape, like a plushie, then you are having to take extra steps just to make sure that every shape has enough leeway for the other shapes, and it's just a bunch of logistical math that I do not want to get into today. So instead of teaching pattern drafting math, I'm just going to show you the absolute bare minimum of what you need to create a 3D model and turn it into a plushie. So these are the two tools we're gonna use. First up, we got Blender 3D, which is this awesome free 3D modeling program you can get on your computer. Next up is Plushify, which is the website where you can upload the 3D model, choose your seams, and create a plushie or purse pattern based on it. First, I'm just going to start you off in Blender 3D. This isn't a full feature length tutorial, just enough to get you started in the software to create your preferred shape using basic 3D modeling. When you first enter Blender, it can be a bit overwhelming. But don't worry, you only need to know some basic features to make your creature. The main difference between Blender and most other 2D drafting programs is that in Blender, instead of just clicking and dragging an item, you click, then use a keyboard key to move, scale, or rotate it. So, for example, you would click the cube we have here, and then press G to grab the cube and move it around in your viewport. That is one of the key differences from going to a 3D program compared to starting out in a 2D program. You will have to use a keyboard, and it's a bit more involved. The three main hotkeys that I suggest you practice with are G for grabbing, S for scaling, and R for rotating. Next, I'm going to introduce a few vocab words to help you understand the software a little bit better. First, we have faces. A face is simply a three or four sided flat portion of a shape in a 3D software. Then we have edges. An edge is exactly what it sounds like, the line connecting any of the faces together. Then we go a little bit smaller, we have vertices. A vertex is essentially just one of Thesey's little corner dots. To make your 3D model the best for exporting, make sure all of the vertices, edges, and faces are connected to something else and that we don't have any lonely little stragglers. Another set of vocab words that I have to introduce to you are the three perspective axes. This indicates the direction something will be moved, scaled, or rotated into. There are three of these, and you can see in the top right corner where you are in perspective to them. How these appear to you can slightly depend on your perspective, so, I'll just demonstrate how they look in your starting view. This is how moving on the x-axis looks. This is how moving on the y-axis looks. And generally, regardless of perspective, the z-axis usually looks like up and down. Now that we have that fundamental understanding of 3D software out of the way, I know it's a lot, but please bear with me. Let me show you how to edit vertices, edges, and faces. Let me show you how to edit any 3D shape in Blender. This isn't quite as self-explanatory as you expect, but once you memorize the keys, you need to press. Then it'll come to you as second nature. If this is your first time doing this, it may seem like a bit of overkill, but I have to show every step for it to make sense. When you need to edit a shape, you first select the shape by clicking, then press either the tab key or directly press from object mode into edit more. Then from there, you can use the hotkeys from earlier and start to shape, manipulate, and move around the points until it looks like what you want it to look. I know you're probably sick of them by now, but there are some more hotkeys that you can use in edit mode. Press X to delete a vertex, face, or edge that you selected. Press A to select all points in an object. Press M to merge by distance, which will combine some vertices together. Press F to fill in lines and points as needed. If you want to get a little bit fancy, use E for extrude to extrude a shape from a face. This is good for things like legs, tails, arms, or even towers. Now it's time to learn about modifiers. There are a few key modifiers that you'll likely want to use to make your life a bit easier in Blender 3D. The mirror modifier, subdivision modifier, solidify modifier, and the decimate modifier. The mirror modifier is exactly what it sounds like. It ensures that side A matches side B. You just need to make sure that you have clipping turned on so that it blends together into one shape. 
you just select your preferred axis, X, Y, or Z, and then it will keep your design evenly mirrored on both sides. The Solidify modifier is a super easy way to take a flat shape and make it 3D. This is best if you're using the 2D plane method to model your plushie. The subdivision modifier is what will make your design have more faces and look smoother, almost like if you took a sander to your design. You only need to set the number to two or three times divided, otherwise you may end up with a heavy number of faces, which the average computer may not be able to handle. As for the decimant modifier, I would only really recommend using that at the very end if necessary. You can select this to unsubdivide if you want to have fewer faces to work with and to make your shape easier to mark seams on. Before we start, one thing that is really helpful for 3D modeling is importing a reference image. So I'm just going to do that very quickly, and I'm not spending too long on that. As long as it is a .png file or .jpeg, it should be fine to import, and by pressing Alt and Z, you can make your shape a little more translucent. Now for the part which you've all been waiting for. Let's 3D model our plushy shape. There are two main methods that I would recommend for modeling it for absolute beginners. You can start with a flat plane and turn it into 3D shape. You can delete the other faces on the default cube, then start moving and shaping as you need to create your design. If you need to add more vertices in edit mode, press Ctrl R to add loop cuts. You're going to edit this carefully, bit by bit, until it looks how you want it to look. Then you'll add on the solidify modifier, make it to your desired thickness. You now have a 3D shape to make a plushie of. Now, if you feel a bit more comfortable using 3D modeling software, method two will be more for you. You start off with the default cube, then add the mirror and subdivision modifier. From there, you can move, shape, and mold it until it fits what you want it to look like. If you need a section to look pointier, add more vertices to an area. You'll shape it until it looks exactly how you'd like it to. This method takes a bit of experimentation, so just play around in the software until you get a shape you like. Once you feel ready to import into Plushify, you can do a couple of checks to make sure that your model looks fine. First, make sure that all of your modifiers are applied. You can go over to the right-hand menu and press Ctrl A or select the drop-down menu and click Apply. Then look at the geometry and make sure all of the points are connected to something. If something, looks a bit off, you can just fix it now. Then, you'll go to the upper menu and select export, and export as a .obj file. This is the format that the website Plushify uses. You shouldn't need to change any settings, the default ones should be fine. Now, we're finally uploading our shape and going on to Plushify to create the plushie of our dreams. Just make sure it's plausible to sew in real life. On the left-hand side, there's an option to select seams. This is the second section down and has a scissor icon. That's where we're going to start at. In this instance, I am going to assume that you did not make a UV map, otherwise this part will not apply. There are two pattern controls underneath the initially blank diagram of your pattern. The second control down, symmetrical seams, should be turned on if you use the mirror modifier. If you did not and have asymmetry in your model, make sure to turn it off in that case. Plushify's user interface is pretty easy to use. Here's a quick how-to direct from their user guide. You can use your mouse to rotate it, click and drag. Zoom in and out, mouse wheel, and move it around. Drag with middle mouse button. On Plushify, to create our seams, click from one vertex to the other to create lines for your pattern. If you need to undo a line, you can just click over it again. It takes a little bit of practice, so be patient with yourself. The next section is called Pattern, and it has a puzzle piece icon. I'm not going to do too much in this section aside from name the pieces just to keep them organized. If you want to add grain lines or fur direction, you totally can. For this model, I don't need to because I plan to use a quilting cotton that I already have on hand to make it, so fur direction isn't needed. Then let's go to the fun part, colors. You can add colors by obviously pressing add color. Then you uh, can rename the colors and change the color by clicking the color box. If you want to apply a color, select the paintbrush to the right of the color and apply to the section of your choice. It's really that easy. The marking section is for things like eyes or appliques. I'm just going to add a single picture of a closed cartoon eye to add later, you can edit your markings by using the rotate and size adjuster handles on the corners. You can make your plushie any size you prefer. Just remember that the larger it is, 
the trickier it will be to fit on letter size paper. Or you can use a projector, in which case I recommend the largest size paper. If you're planning on making a ginormous plushie, then you might need to use multiple sheets of A0 and use a PDF stitcher to create one gigantic PDF to use for your pattern. The next section, print, is where you decide what paper size to use and what seam allowance. The seam allowance may depend on the scale and intricacy of the design, so larger items can use a larger seam allowance, whereas smaller items may use a smaller allowance. If you're not sure where to start, a 5-8 seam allowance is used for clothing items, so if it's smaller, perhaps use a smaller seam allowance. If the typical 5-8s doesn't feel like enough allowance, then you can go bigger. Once your pattern is ready, you can either print it out or use a projector. For a projector, I recommend using PatternProjector.com. It's a free site where you can calibrate and use any size PDF that you prefer for sewing. You can also invert colors and mirror designs too. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me, and any comments you leave I will cherish like they're solid gold. Which I know sounds kinda dorky, but that's how I feel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to respond to all of them. Until next time, happy crafting!